Hello. Vamos a comenzar la clase. Vamos a, empe eh, vamos a empezar la clase porque todavía faltan unos estudiantes. Voy a esperar cinco minutos. Y si no, voy a comenzar la clase siempre, ¿verdad? Si hay alguna razón por la cual no se hayan conectado, pues este, solo vamos a esperar unos minutos para ver si hay alguien más que pueda conectarse. Solo vamos a esperar unos minutos y ya vamos a comenzar la clase. Ok, good night, teacher. Good night. How are you? Good evening. Good evening. I'm doing fine. How ok. Perfect, perfect. I'm fine right now. I'm just waiting for more students. Do you know if other students are going to connect or? or no, no, I don't know. I don't you know. don't know. You just connected. You already know, right? That we're we going to have the class, right? Yeah. Okay, yes, we have another one there. So we will, we will, we will just wait just a couple of minutes because probably they didn't know or probably they were not able to connect because it was kind of raining. So we are going to wait a little bit. Okay, good evening. Good evening, Mercy. Good evening, Azucena. Good evening, Paola. Good evening, okay, we are going to begin in a couple. Good evening. We are going to begin in a couple of minutes, okay? En unos minutos comenzamos. Solo voy a ver si hay alguien más que se conecte. Okay, we are going to begin in a couple of minutes. In the meantime, I'm going to talk to you about uh, the platform, okay? En la plataforma, esto lo voy a decir en, en español. En la plataforma, pues, nosotros tenemos ejercicios. No sé si ustedes ya los completaron o tienen alguna pregunta acerca de los ejercicios. No preguntas, ok. No hay problemas, todos ya los han completado. Este, sí, eh, el, el detalle es que yo no había comprendido que tenía que ser antes de la clase, pero hoy ya comprendí, así que hoy sí ya completé la, la uno y dos. Ok, ok, muy bien. Entonces, este, si ustedes tienen alguna, alguna pregunta acerca de, de los ejercicios de la plataforma, tienen algún problema también porque a veces da problema que eh, les muestra ya las respuestas o no se las acepta. Me pueden decir durante en el grupo de WhatsApp, ¿verdad? Entonces, ahí pueden, pueden decirme si tienen algún problema. Entonces, esto es lo que tienen que completar. Si ya lo completaron, que okay, we should be fine. Everything will be okay, okay? So, also, if you want to practice these exercises, um, we can do it, right? We can do it um, in these sessions, right? No problem. But if you don't have any questions, if you have completed all of that, we are going to begin with the class. In the previous class, we were talking about the used to, right? The word used to. What does it mean used to? What, what do we use it for? You remember that? It's the meaning solía, teacher, I used to. Yeah, exactly, solía, something that we used to do and we don't do anymore, right? Okay, like for example, can you give me an example? When a child, <laughs> I used to play football soccer. <laughs> exactly, when I was a child, I used to play football soccer, exactly. I used to play with my friends, I used to play at school, right in the school. Very good. Another example? When I was a child, I used to uh, play with dolls, but at the moment I I don't play with dolls. I, I would... Exactly. That's a good, a, a good um, example. When I was a child, I used to play with dolls. Now I don't play anymore with dolls, right? Very good. So that is the previous class, right? And we have more examples there in the presentation. When I was younger, I used to go out and dance every weekend. Now I like to spend my weekends in my house, watching movies and doing house chores. And you, what do you used to do before? So that's before, right? Now we used to have a, 
a homework. Do you did you do the homework? What was the homework about? Homework? No homework. Something uh, about something we used to do, but don't do it anymore. Yeah, yeah, that was before. That was the previous class. You, you investigated about that, Edgardo? Do you have more examples? Yeah. Uh, well, um, I never used to cook for my family, but but now um, I used to cook um, very often. Okay, so you never used to cook before. Now, what do you cook now? Now, now that you cook for your family. Uh, uh, well, I learned uh, about cook uh, of many many food. Italian food, pasta, for example, so um, Chinese food, um, mm -hmm. uh, several uh, of foods. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. No problem. Several food, Chinese food. Uh, do you uh, scramble yeah. eggs? Different things like. What is yeah, your What is the favorite food that you like to cook for your family? Uh, riblets on barbecue. Okay, it sounds delicious. It sounds delicious. Yeah, it is delicious, right? It is delicious. It yeah. is delicious. Very good. Very good. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Edgar. Thank you for sharing that information with us. But we had another another homework. The homework is or was to investigate what is a countable noun and uncountable nouns. We have that also in Spanish, right? So can you tell me what a countable noun is? Yeah, uh, countable uh, countable nouns are uh, are for example peoples, mm -hmm. uh, things, and people, things, and uh, I, I I don't remember the other one. Yeah, people, things. Those are countable nouns. And an uncountable noun. What is an uncountable animal? Noun? Animals. Yes. Uncountable. Are the water, sugar. Water, sugar, yes, exactly. Very good. So that was our, our, our homework, right? We are going to start with the class with that. And then we are going to have more examples. So the objective for this class, according to what we have in the platform, is that we are going to learn how to describe problems in English using count and non-count nouns. By the end of this class, you'll, be lear you'll learn how to describe problems in a city using phrases like too many, too much, less, fewer, enough, and more. You'll also learn about common non-counts noun including water, oxygen, English, traffic, milk, soccer, sunshine, etc. And understand how to tell if a noun is count or non-count an English oral comprehension audio exercise is included, but that is in the platform. So adverbs of quantity, that's what we are going to study today. First of all, to study the adverbs of quantity, we need to know what a noun is. Noun, it's a word used to identify any of a class of people, places, or things. For example, a cake is a noun, right? Omaha is a noun, proper nouns are nouns. Juan Perez is a noun. School bus is a noun. Shoes is a noun. And traffic is a noun. All of those are nouns. So first of all, that's what we need to identify. What is a noun? That's a noun. All of those are nouns. And we have countable nouns and uncountable nouns or non-count nouns. For example, a countable noun is a noun that can be counted. Algo que podemos contar. We can add S at the end of them. Una de las características es que le podemos agregar la S al final. We can pluralize them. For example, the apples, right? One apple, two apples, five apples. Okay, we can count them and we can pluralize them. That's a countable noun. And we have uncountable nouns, right? Nouns that cannot be counted. It is not something that you can quantify. We have milk, for example. Milk, we cannot... Uh, count it, right? It's a liquid, right? Money. In general, we cannot count all the money in the world, right? And rice. We cannot count rice. We can count 
a bowl of rice. That's something countable. One bowl, two bowls, but not rice in general, okay? Now, there is a dog, that this is a dog barking right now. Now with, Sorry, um, <laughs> okay, no problem. So with uncountable, now we have measure mean units, right? That's how we can count uncountable nouns. We need a standard unit of measurement to make our judgment more reliable and accurate. So we don't, uh, I, I point out this because we don't want to get confused, right? Because uh, some people may say, but teacher, we can count coffee, a cup of coffee, two cup of coffee. Yes, but it's a cup, right? We can count water, one bottle of water. I, I can count water, right? But it's a bottle. We can count the bottle, not the water, okay? So that's something that we have to pay attention and we don't have to get confused. Now we are going, uh, I want you to tell me about countable nouns or uncountable. For example, the first sentence says the buses are old and slow and they can cause too much pollution. In cities with less pollution, people are healthier. So buses is countable or uncountable? Countable, countable no. Countable, very good. Countable. Pollution, pollution is countable or uncountable? Uncountable. Uncountable. Uncountable, very good. Cities, countable or uncountable? Countable. Countable. We can plural, 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 sorry, yes. pluralize it, right? Pluralize it. Cities, at the end, right, we have the S, exactly. And we have people, people is uncountable or countable? Countable. Countable. People is the plural of persons, right? We can say one person, two persons, or one person, two people, right? That's okay. Cars. Cars is countable or uncountable? Countable. 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 Taxis is countable or uncountable? Countable. countable. Very good. Buses. Countable or uncountable? Countable. 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 Bicyclist, countable or uncountable? Countable. Countable, very good. Problem, problem is countable or uncountable? Uncountable. Uncountable, uncountable, uncountable or countable? Uncountable. Uh, countable. Countable. Yes, we can count problems. Well, I have a problem, I have two problems. We can plur pluralize it also. Parking is countable or uncountable? Uncountable. Uncountable. Very good. So parking is uncountable. We can count parking spaces, right? The space where we park. That's countable. But parking in general is uncountable. So very good. So we have three sentences there. If we read the sentences, it is talking about the city, right? Our city, like there are too many cars. Well, the cars, taxis, buses are a danger for bicyclists. There is too much traffic. And the last one says there should be fewer cars, but I think that the biggest problem is parking. There just isn't enough parking. So it's talking about the city, about the problems in the city, et cetera, right? But the main point here is that we know what a countable and an uncountable noun is. And we have the, the answers here, right? The buses are countable, pollution is uncountable, cities countable, people countable, cars countable, taxis countable, buses countable, bicyclists countable, traffic uncountable, problem countable in parking uncountable. So we have identified that already. Now we are going to work with adverbs of quantity. That's the topic for today. We have to review a little bit for nouns, countable and uncountable, just to be clear with this, because I don't want you to get confused. We have adverbs and we have two types of adverbs, right? We can use it. Some of them we can use only with countable and some of them we can use only with uncountable nouns. And we have examples there. It says with count nouns, we have examples like there are too many cars, there should be fewer cars, we need more subway lines, there aren't enough buses. And non-countable or uncountable nouns is there is too much traffic, there should be less pollution, we need more public transportation, and there isn't enough parking. 
So the adverbs of quantity are too many, fewer, more, enough, too much, and less. With countable, we can use only too many, fewer, and more and enough are for both, right? It doesn't matter. We can use it for countable and uncountable. There is no problem there. But with too much and less, it's just with uncountable. So too many, countable. Too much, uncountable. Fewer, countable. Less, uncountable. Okay? So do we have any question about that? Do you have questions? No question. Okay, very good. We are going to continue then. If you don't have questions, everything's clear. Um, also, we have um, some formulas, right? To know where to, where to place the adverbs of quantity. For example, there are too many cars. We have there plus the verb to be plus too many, too many plus a countable noun, right? It's a count noun, okay? So too many is just for countable. And it's over there. We have the other one that says there should be fewer cars. Fewer is with countable, right? Countable. The next one says we should have more police officers. More, it goes with both, right? Countable and uncountable. In this case, police officer is a countable noun. And there is the formula. We need just to follow the formula. Subject plus should plus verb plus fewer or more and accountable now. And there aren't, right? There aren't is no hay, verdad? Eso significa. There aren't enough buses. What does it mean enough? Suficiente, right? There aren't enough buses. There aren't enough police officers. So that is the structure. There aren't enough plus the count now. And we have here the more formulas, right? We have another example. There should be less pollution. Less because it's uh, an uncountable noun, right? Pollution. We cannot count pollution. So it is subject plus should plus verb plus less or more plus the uncountable noun. Their should is to express an opinion, right? Debería de. Debería de haber más carros. Debería de haber menos contaminación. There should be, right? There should be. And the last formula, I guess it is the last formula, is because uh, we have the subject plus verb plus too much. Too much is for uncountable, right? Uncountable or enough and the uncountable noun. There is too much traffic. There is too much pollution or in negative, right? Also, there isn't enough parking. So this is just for you to get a, a, an idea how to create the sentences. If we follow these formulas, everything will be okay, okay? No, no problem. We won't have any, any um, mistakes. Now we are sure. going to practice, okay? Do you have questions right now? Sure. No questions? Okay. No, it's clear. It's clear, sure. yes. Uh, when we use uh, the isn't, is because uh, we're using a not comfortable noun. And we, in, when we use there aren't, it's because we are using a comfortable noun. Exactly, why? Because we can plur pluralize the countable nouns. And with uncountable nouns, we cannot do that, right? We cannot pl pluralize it. So that's why it is just is. Very good, very good, very good. Now we are going to practice if, we, if, we, if you don't have more questions about this. What is this? What is this picture? It's food. It's food, it's exactly. Food. It's junk food, but it's the most delicious food, right? So it's food. Food is countable or uncountable? Uncountable. Uncountable. Okay. Uncountable. Uncountable. So many people, uh, let's say, let's say that we agree that is uncountable. Okay. So now we have uh, to choose the correct option for this sentence related with food. It says, "I ate too much food," or "I ate 
too many food. What is the correct option? Too much food. Too much, too much food. food. Too much food. Because too, it's, much. too much is with uncountable, right? Yes. Okay, and too many is with countable. Okay, let's say, let's see, let's see. Yes, correct, very good. I ate too much food. Too much is because it's uncountable. We can count hamburgers, we can count uh, french fries, but food in general, it's uncountable, okay? Very good, we can count portions also. Next one, money. Money. Money is uncountable or countable? Uncountable. 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 Okay. Let's see. It says, I used to earn fewer money in my previous job, or I used to earn less money in my previous job. What is the correct one? Less, less money. Less money. Less, money. less money. Are you sure? Yes. 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 Okay. That's what I like to, to hear, right? Yes, teacher. Yes, I'm sure. Let's see. Yes, it is correct. Very good. I used to earn less money in my previous job. Money is um, uncountable because that is in general, right? We cannot count the all the money in the world, right? We can count bills like $1, $2, $3, right? or coins, right, currency, but we cannot count money itself. So very good. Next one, this is a pizza, right? So it says, there is too much cheese in this pizza or there is too many cheese in this pizza? Too many, too many cheese. Too many cheese. Too many or too much? Too many. many. Too many. many. Too many. Okay. Too much. Too much. Okay. Now we are kind of confused, right? Okay. I first, think it's too many. You think it's too many. Okay. So remember that first we need to know if it if cheese is countable or uncountable. That's the first thing it's that we need to know. It's uncountable or countable. Can we count it's cheese? Can we count cheese? We can can we say one cheese, two cheeses? Uncountable. Three cheeses? Uncountable. Uncountable. Okay. It's so uncountable. If it is uncountable, what do we use? Too much or too many? Too much. Too, much. too many. Um, too, much. too many or too much? Too much. Too much. Okay. For uncountable is too much. For uncountable is too much, they say. Okay. For uncountable is too much. Let's see. Exactly. It's too much, right? There is too much cheese in this pizza. Cheese is uncountable. We can count it with the measurement units, right? But it's uncountable cheese. And too much is the correct adverb of quantity. Very good. Now we have traffic, right? A lot of cars. That is uh, San Salvador at, at 6 a.m., right? Or 12 p.m. Okay, we are going to see. It says there are or there aren't too many cars in my city. Which one do there you are. There, there are, are, right? There, there are. are. There are. That's, that's easy, right? That's easy. There are because we can see that there are a lot of cars. Very good. Very good. There are too many cars in my city. Next one. In my city, there is enough pollution to get sick or there isn't enough pollution to get sick. See, there, is there, there, is. there is there is there is exactly very good there is and we can see here that we can use uh, enough is, with yeah. a positive statement right there is enough pollution to get sick very good <clears throat> now next one i guess this is the last one we have more cars and it says there should be fewer traffic in my city or there should be less traffic in my city to be less traffic. Less, tra less traffic, less traffic in my city. Less traffic? Yes. Or, or yes. fewer? Traffic. Okay. Less. Traffic. Less. 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 Let's traffic. see. Let's see. Let's see. Less traffic. Why? Because traffic is uncountable. Uncount right? uncountable. Very good. And less with, is with uncountable nouns. Very good. Congratulations. So there are no questions. I can see that you understood very good the uncountable 
and the countable nouns and adverbs of quantity. Very good. Now we are going to continue with at the city, right? Because we used to uh, talk about the city and this is related with the city. So we are going to express our ideas about the place we live in. It says, what should be less or more in your city? Use adverbs of frequency. For example, there should be more taxis and fewer cars in my city. There should be more parks and green areas in my city. There should be less pollution and littering in my neighborhood. And the last one says, there should be fewer billboards on the streets. So we are going to talk about our, our city. For example, in my city, I guess, I believe that there should be less traffic. There should be fewer cars because nowadays uh, families, some families, not, not all of them, but some of them, they have two or three cars per family. So that's a lot of cars. That's too many cars, right? So in my opinion, I guess that there should be another way to travel from one point to another point in the city and we should have fewer cars. There should be less pollution in that way. It's going to be less pollution and it's going to be like more spaces with pedestrians, right? Do you know what a pedestrian is? Pedestrian are when you are walking on, on the street, in your city, you are a pedestrian, okay? So that's uh, when you walk, when you're walking, when you're driving, you're a driver, right? You're in your car. So um, tell me uh, an example. I don't know if you have, if we have uh, one volunteer to express your idea, your feelings about your city, what should be changed? Let's say, let's say that you, you were a major in your city. There should be more of what or less of what? Tell me, a volunteer, please, just one. One volunteer, two volunteers, raise your hand if you want to participate. There we have- should be more uh -huh. bicycles in the city. There should be more bicycles in the city. Yes, I see for the pollution. For the pollution. Okay, very good, Mercy. There should be more bicycles. Do you use or do you ride a bicycle sometimes? Sometimes when I, I was a time, it's, it's a good exercise for me. <laughs> yes, it's a good exercise also. It's a good activity. People uh, will be more active, right? Also, and there you will be able probably to enjoy the ride so there should be more bicycles. Very good. Thank you for your participation, Mercy. Another volunteer, please. Somebody else? Another one? Me, teacher. Okay, go ahead. There should be more trees in my there city. Be, there should be more trees in your city. Yes. There aren't trees in your city? Oh, yes, because I little. A little or yes. a few, a few, a few trees, <laughs> right? A few, a few trees. Yes. Okay. And uh, why do you, do you think that we need more trees? Why there should be more trees? I, I, I know in the third picture. Yes. What? Why? Why do we need more trees? Why? Oh, because... Um, Many, many, many houses is building. Yes, there are, there are too many houses, right? It's yes. really hot, right? Do you feel this? That <laughs> sometimes really hot is like everywhere in El Salvador. It's really hot nowadays. Previously or before, uh, when I was a child, probably, or when you were a child, uh, there are areas in which we can, it, it was cooler, right? It was a different weather, but now, the whole Salvador is like San Miguel, right? It's really hot all the time, at night, in the morning, at noon. So yes, I agree with you, Jaime. There should be more trees, more plants, and more green areas. Very good, very good. And we're going to have one last participant, the last one. I just need one more. There people. should be more dumps in the city. There should be more? 
dump basureros in the city. Ah, uh, yes, dumps. Okay, very good. Why? Because when it rains, the street flood. Yes, exactly. Yes, when it's raining, or there is like a flood right on every street. It's like Venezia, right? Very good. Yes, there should be more dumps. Or actually, I think that there should be more uh, dumps also or or trash cans. But also we have to change our culture, right? Because, for example, today I saw a lady and she was throwing garbage outside of the of the bus. So it was like, we don't care about oh, the garbage. Yeah. So even if there are trash cans, probably we will be throwing all the garbage on the streets, outside. And we will have floods and we will have these kind of problems. But yeah, probably that would be a solution for that, probably. So thank you very much for your participation. Oh, yes, Karen. the people mostly. Yeah, yeah, the people, probably the people is the main problem there. But thank you, Carla, for your participation. Yes. Okay, now we are going to continue with the class. Let me see here. Now, the second part of this class will be related to indirect questions, right? An indirect question uh, is a question that is more formal, more polite, and but it's kind of tricky when we try to practice it. For example, uh, we have their uh, conversation. Probably if you have studied the platform, you were able to hear or study this conversation. It says, um, excuse me, can you tell me where the nearest ATM is? There is one upstairs near the food court. What is an ATM? Do you know what an ATM is? Un cajero. Cajero, cajero automático. Cajero, cajero automático. automático. Exactly. Automatic teller machine. Exactly. That's correct. So uh, that is an indirect question, right? Excuse me. Can you tell me where the nearest ATM is? The next one says, do you know where I can catch a bus to the city? Do you know where I can catch a bus to the city? The question, the, the answer is sure. Just follow the signs of transportation. The next one is, do you know how much the bus costs? Do you know how much the bus costs? Yes, it's 50 cents. And the last one is, do you know where the bookstore is? Yes, go upstairs and turn right. You'll see one on your left. All of those are indirect questions. Well, what is an indirect question? Okay, we have more examples here. It says indirect questions are more formal and polite than a direct question. The difference is, the difference is that verb goes after the sentence as it will in a positive sentence. Entonces, tenemos las preguntas directas y las indirectas. Las indirectas son más formales, más educadas, ¿verdad? Por decir así, ¿verdad? Algo más formales. And we have direct questions. For example, here in the green screen or the green square, we have, where is the bank? That is direct, right? Where is the bank? Now, indirect, can you tell me where the bank is? So, we have another one. Where are the restrooms? That is direct. Where are the restrooms? Now, indirect, do you know where the restrooms are so you see that it changes right you can see that it changes the order so we have to be careful with that now we have another example with the do or did uh, let's see here teacher temporal con mi corrección se va a cada momento la señal okay hillman no problem hey try to try to stay in the class or if you have problems no no problem you can see it later so we have it here. Um, how often do the buses leave? That is direct. Indirect, can you tell me how often the, the buses leave? What time does the bank open? Indirect, do you know what time the bank opens? Direct, when did Fly 566 arrive? Indirect question, do you know when Fly 566 arrived? So we have different things, right? We have to practice, but it's really easy because we have formulas, right? Let me see here. Yeah, that is the formula for indirect questions. 
for example, uh, where is the bank? That is direct. If you notice the indirect questions, we begin with, can you tell me? Me puede decir, usted, eh, usted sabe dónde está tal cosa, dónde está el banco, me podría ayudar, por favor. Is that the translation? That is the sense of it, right? So it begins with, can you tell me? Could you tell me? Do you know? And then the WH word, where, right? And then the subject and then the verb. Could you tell me where the bank is? Do you know where the restrooms are? So if we follow the structure, if we follow the formula, it's okay. You shouldn't have any problem. And also we have another example there. Do you know what time the bank opens? Do you know WH word, subject and verb? It's the same, okay? So we have to be careful. Uh, do you have any question with indirect questions right now? Preguntas? Yes, preguntas, no, yes. No, no teacher. No questions, okay. Okay, uh, if you have questions, just please raise your hand. Carla, Alicia, Juan, Maria, Rosa, Rodolfo, Rosaura, Mauricio, Hilma, Carla, Gabriela, Walter, Jaime, Reyes, Tatiana, uh, Brian, Lisette, yes, Susan. Okay, if you have questions, please just let me know. Now we are going to continue with this exercise. So if you don't have questions, you shouldn't have any problem with this. It says transform the following direct questions into indirect questions. Number one. How much does the taxi cost? Transform this into indirect question, please. Si tiene un libro, hágalo en su libro en cuaderno. Si tiene la computadora, puede escribirlo para ver si lo puede hacer. Porque a veces así se ordenan más las ideas. How much does the taxi cost? Indirect question. Transforme, transformelo, por favor. Do you have the answer? Mm -hmm. Could you tell me does the does the taxi cost? Could could you tell me? Could you tell me? Mm -hmm. Does the taxi cost? Could you tell me does the taxi cost? Do you know how much the taxi? Do you know how much does the taxi cost? Do you know how much does the taxi cost? Yes. Okay, that's, know. yeah, yeah, it's okay, it's okay, okay, it's okay. We are practicing, we are practicing. Do you remember the formula? Well, the formula is kind of difficult, okay? So we are going to review it. Is, do you know, WH word, what is the WH word? How much? Do you know how much? Subject, what is the subject? The taxi, taxi. the taxi, exactly, the taxi. Do you know how much the taxi verb cost, right? Cost. So we erase does. Does doesn't exist. We erase it. Why? Because we are using do at the beginning. Do you know? So we cannot have two auxiliaries. We cannot have two auxiliaries. We cannot say, do you know? Do you know? Or do you know? Does you know? No, we cannot say that, right? So is do you know how much the taxi cost? And this cost is with S, right? A este se le agrega una S, a cost. ¿Por qué? Why? Why do we add an S to cost? Because it's the third person. person. Very good. It's a third person singular. So do you know how much the taxi costs? Very good. So we did the first one, okay? Now the second one, number two. Where should I go shopping? Where should I go shopping? Transform it. Kitchen. Transform a, into an indirect question. Where should I go shopping? Number two. You can, you can begin with any of those, right? You can begin with, can you tell me? Do you know? Could you tell me? Any of those. You can begin with any of those. Would you tell me where should I go shopping? 
Okay, we have a wonder. Could you tell me where should I go shopping? Is that correct? No, that's not. Okay, where it's kind of, it's kind of, and that's that's what happens when we try when we are talking really fast. Probably we can commit this mistake. So for that reason, we have to start uh, practicing since now, right? So first is, do you know, Raro, or can you tell me? Then W H, right? W H word. What is the W H word? Where, right? Do where? You know where? Then, sorry. Then the subject, right? Subject is. I, right? I, and then the verb. The verb is should go, right? So do you know where I should go shopping? Do you know where I should, I should go shopping? That is the indirect question. Now the third one, number three. Where can I get a map? Donde puedo obtener un mapa? Where can I get a map? Transform it, please. Transform it. Write it if it is good for you to order, Me organize teacher. it. Yes, go Me ahead. Teacher. Could you know where I can get a map? Okay, could you tell me where? I can get a map. Very good. Okay. Could you tell me where I, I can, can get. get a map? Very good. Why? Because we are following the formula. Do you know where? I, and then the verb, right? Can get a map. Very good. Now, the last one. Where's a good place to meet people? Donde es un buen lugar para conocer gente? Where's a good place to meet people? Transform it, please. You can begin with, can you tell me? Do you know? Could you tell me? I'm hearing like a TikTok. Someone is like ticking. Okay. Ticking is like a a clock. Yes. So do you do you have the answer for the last one? Do you know? Where Could you tell me where it is a good place to meet people? Do you know? Okay, very good. Do you know? Then the WH, where? And then the subject. What is the subject? It's a, a good place. A good place. Very good. A good place. Do you know where a good place to meet people? Yes. Yes. Very good. Exactly. Do you know where a good place to meet people is? Check here. Over here is the formula. Can you tell me where a good place to meet people is? Exactly. Very good. Very good. So we have here the, the answers. Okay. How much does the taxi cost? Do you know how much the taxi costs? Where should I go shopping? Could you tell me where I should go shopping? Where can I get a map? Can you tell me where I can get a map? Where's a good place to meet people? Do you know where a good place to meet people is? So you see, it's indirect. Direct questions, indirect questions, right? That is the difference. It's kind of difficult, but you just need to practice, okay? You just need to write it and it is not only for a series or this kind of questions. It's for every kind of question, right? Every question, we can transform it in an indirect question. Now we have an activity. Uh, do you have, I'm uh, sorry, do you have any questions about this topic, about this? Yes, no, no questions. Okay. So we are going to practice right now, a little practice. It says, uh, create a conversation using indirect questions. I want you to create a conversation using indirect questions, conversación. Student A will be a local and student B will be a foreigner in a city. Student A will ask about places, how to get to those places, and general information about the city. And student B will provide information and ask general information also. 
So I want you to create a conversation, a small conversation, not a long conversation, okay? We are going to practice it right now. How it should be this conversation? Like this one, right? Like the one at the beginning. For example, one of you will ask is, excuse me, do you know where I can catch a bus to the city? Okay, Tatiana, no problem. You're having problems with the internet? Okay, no problem. You can stay online if you if, if you can, right? No problem. Um, so I was saying uh, the conversation, uh, the conversation can, for example, be, do you know where I can catch a bus to the city? And then the other person can tell you, yeah, just follow this street or, or walk down and you will see a bus stop, right? That's it. That is a short answer that you can create right now. And then the other person will ask an indirect question. Can be any question, right? Do you know what time it is? For example, do you know what time it is? I can ask Rodolfo, right? Rosaura, Walter, do you know what time it is, Walter? And they can tell me the time, right? Yes, it is 9.46, right? And that's it. That's the conversation that I want you to practice right now. You can write down your question if you want to, if it is easier for you. You just need to follow the formulas, right? So um, we are going to begin right now just to practice. Now, uh, who wants to begin? I just want to volunteers first and then we are going to continue. Okay, Rodolfo. Rodolfo Cruz wants to participate. Who wants to participate with Rodolfo? Just a small conversation like this one. Somebody else? Just raise your hand and you will practice, okay? You, will, you can participate. Somebody else? We have Maria, we have Jaime, we have Alicia, we have Brian. We have Azucena. Who wants Nico, to practice? I, I, I tried. Carla? Yes. Okay, Carla, you will practice with Rodolfo. Remember, one of you will ask one indirect question, you answer, and then the same, right, with the other okay. the other part, right? Okay, who will, who will begin, Rodolfo or Carla? Okay. Me. Okay. I'm Rodolfo. Hi, Rodolfo. Hi, Carla. How are you? I'm fine. And you? Excellent, Rodolfo. Do you know where is the supermarket is? Uh, yes, I know. The supermarket is across to the bank. Okay. Okay. It's, um, you can ask me the question. Okay. Uh, could you tell me where is the 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 pharmacy near my direction in Santa Tecla. Okay, um, the pharmacy is next to Don Pollo. Okay, thank you for the information. Okay, Rodolfo, you're welcome. Okay, very good, very good. Good example. Congratulations. Very good. Now, do you know where the bank is? Okay, very good. Uh, that's a good question. Thank you, Carla. You did very great. Very good. Rodolfo, um, it's good, but remember the formula, right? The order. Uh, can you tell me where the pharmacy is, right? Can you tell me where the pharmacy is? We cannot, we cannot have two questions in one sentence, right? Can you tell me where is the pharmacy? No. Can you tell me where is the pharmacy? We have two questions, right? We have to change the order. Can you tell me where the pharmacy is? Okay. Now I need other two volunteers, please. Carla de Alegría. Okay, Carla de Alegría. Who wants to participate with Carla? Just raise your hand. Another volunteer. 
Okay, we have Carla de Alegría. Who said me? Eduardo, Edgardo, right? Yes. Okay, yes, so I, one I question, tried. one question each of you, okay? Who, who will begin? Me, okay, Carla, okay, go ahead, Carla. Hello, Edgardo. How are you Hi. doing today? Hi, Carla, I'm doing fine. How about you? I'm good too, thank you for asking. I just, uh, I just want to ask you a question. Can you tell me a place to go out this weekend? Sure, you can go to... Okay. And you can go to a Multiplaza and have fun. Oh, really? Is it beautiful? Yeah, it's very interesting. There are so many uh, shops and, mm -hmm. and, they ha and, and also have a, a movie theater. Okay, that's a great idea. I, I'm going to go to the movie. Thank you for yes. the recommendation, Edgardo. Okay. Okay. okay, Carla. Uh, could you tell me, Carla, where the, the nearest bank is? Okay, you can go a straight, a straight on this street uh, in front of the drugstore. Um, that's it. Okay. <laughs> okay, Carla, thank you. <laughs> thank you okay. for the <laughs> Okay, very good, very good. Can you tell me where the nearest drugstore is? Very good. That's okay. Thank you, Carla, for your participation. It was um it was really good. It was okay. I guess both uh indirect questions were okay, were properly formed. So thank you for your participation. And I want uh two more. Two more, please. Just two more. Just two more, two more. We have Juan, we have Rosa, we have Gabriela, we have Lisette, we have Alicia, we have Jaime. Who wants to participate? Just one more conversation. We have Mercy. Who else wants to participate? This is the time to participate because in this case, we you will be able to commit mistakes and there is no problem, right? Just two more. Okay. Okay, Mercy, who wants to participate with Mercy? Jaime? Juan, Rosa, Gabriela, Azucena, Brian, Jaime. Who wants to participate with, with Mercy? Just one. Me, teacher. Okay, Jaime. Very good. Thank you. <laughs> yes, let's try. Yes, let's try. No problem. Yes, let's try. Okay, remember one indirect question per each of you. Who will begin? Hi. Hi. Okay, Hi, mercy. Okay, mercy. Okay. Hi, Jaime. Good evening. Hello, Mercy. Good evening. Uh, Fine. I, I have a problem. You can help me. Can you tell me who is, where is the Ministerio de Hacienda? <laughs> oh, okay, merci. Yes, the Ministerio de Hacienda is, uh, is okay in the central government or oh, my, my office <laughs> because the, uh, the administration is in the, Three Torres. <laughs> uh, oh, it's okay. It's in front to the hospital blue, the blue hospital. It's okay. It's okay. It's, it's near the Mercado Las Pulgas. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you very much, Jaime. It's a good information for me. It's okay. Have a nice 
night. Thank you. Good evening. Good night. Good night. Good night, Mercy. I'll see you. Okay, very good. But Jaime, you didn't ask your indirect question to Mercy. <laughs> yes, como que la idea no, no mucho le <laughs> <laughs> Yes, but you did it. Yes, actually you got the idea, but yes, it was good. Okay, but you didn't ask your indirect question. But I remember to be careful, right? Remember uh, to practice with the formulas, right? Because you, yes, you yes. said, can you tell me where is Ministerio de Hacienda, right? Así es. And I, I can understand, right? Can you tell me where it is? But yes. the correct way to say it is, can you tell me where Ministerio de Hacienda is? Is is at the end because it's an indirect yes. question. Okay. okay, very good. So we are about finished right now. I know it's Friday. I know that you're kind of tired and it's weekend already. So yes, I guess we finished with all the conversations and all the activities. Now, just to remind you, I don't know if you have any question about the platform. Have you finished all the the exercises? These exercises? No? I finished. Yes. That quiz. Yes. 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 Okay, very good. Remember that if you don't finish, I try to finish this right for today because it's something that you have to to do it. I know it's kind of tiring now, not right now at this time to finish it, but if you have progress during the week, um, remember to complete all of this, the section one and section two. This is section one, right? And then we have section two. Let's see. This one is section two, I guess. So if you have any question about, or if you have any problem with these exercises just let me know if you want to practice these exercises um in these classes we can try to do it right we can try or if you have any suggestion also uh with these classes you can let me know okay if you have for example teacher i want to practice more conversation like this or teacher i want more grammar exercises I want to write more. I want like quizzes. I don't know if you can do more quizzes. Tell me and I will try to uh, uh, plan it or provide you those exercises during the class. So um, recuerden, eh, las sugerencias me las pueden hacer al grupo de WhatsApp o me las pueden hacer uh, pues por aquí también en la clase, no en el chat también, por privado. Si ustedes quieren que pues a practicar más conversaciones o listenings. Voy a tratar yo de buscarlos y yo los voy a tratar de implementar en sus clases. So I just want to say thank you for this first week. Thank you for your effort. I know it's a, a big sacrifice, a big effort you're doing. And uh, it was a, a great week. So now this is the end of uh, the first week. We are going to continue and suddenly you will see that the classes will be over, okay? So I just want to say thank you. Have a good evening. Have a good weekend and take care, okay? I hope to see you on Monday. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Have a nice day. Have a nice evening. Night. Take care. Rest, please. Have a nice weekend for everyone. Have a nice weekend. Thank you. Have a nice weekend. Thank you. Bye, Jaime. Por eso.